Today is a different day. We're doing something else today. We're changing things up. I want to show you a little something that was gifted to me. And by little, I mean gigantic. It takes up one quarter of my laundry room. This is my laundry room, by the way. This is like the best. It is wild orchids and sandalwood. I think my cats are fighting. Could you guys not? Would you mind not? I'm gonna throw something at you. Please don't. I don't actually have, I don't, what am I gonna throw at them? My words? I already did that. It didn't help, they still get into fights. Okay, now that my cats are done fighting, I would like to, this is not a real fight, they just, they squabble. It's more of a squabble, you know what I mean? So anyway, I wanna tell you about my Mars Hydro Tent. This was gifted to me a little over a month ago. So in like December, 2021, I set this up. I started putting my Hoyas in it and it has been nothing short of absolutely amazing. In December, when I received the tent, I just put like all of my Hoyas that I possibly could into this tent and the, like, the growth was incredible, like right off the bat, just within the first week. Within a month, the plants put out more growth than they had in the entire year leading up to when I got this tent. So that, that was pretty amazing. But I have moved all of those Hoyas out into the living room. I put them on my shelves where I have some other lights that I'll talk about in another upcoming video. So in here right now, I have like a ton of cuttings that I'm rooting and I just wanna show them to you. I'm gonna give you a little tent tour and I hope that you enjoy that, you know? And I'll tell you a little bit about my tent too. So, let's open this puppy up. It's bright. This tent, it's a small space, okay. So the tent itself is uh, one meter by one meter. Uh, wow, I'm bad at explaining this. <laughs> so the tent itself is one meter by one meter in length and width. It's like three feet by three feet and then it is 1.8 meters high. So it's a little taller than me. I'm 1.64 meters. So, you know, average, average height. A little taller than me. And the light that I have inside is the FC3000. I chose this light because it had great reviews. It has awesome Samsung diodes and it was just a great sized light with the adequate amount of panels to cover the entire canopy of a tent of this size. If I had gone up a size to like um, 1.2 meters by 1.2 meters, I probably would have sized up the light a little bit. I don't know, but this is like the perfect light for this tent. Wonders, it's just doing wonders for my Hoyas. And I definitely don't have it up to 100%. It would fry the heck out of my Hoyas. But I also liked that, you know, it is adjustable. And if ever I do want to put some plants in here that are higher light plants, I have the option to do that. You know, I, I have options with this light, but they have a lot of lights to choose from. They have a lot of really excellent lighting options. And uh, you know, if you want to, if you're thinking about getting a Mars Hydro tent, maybe you will be after you see my, my little Hoya babies and some of the Hoyas that had been in here for a month, then you can go to any Mars Hydro site, you know, .com, .co, .uk, German, Mars Hydro, any of those sites, and use the code uh, Betsy Begonia. You'll get 3% off your purchase at Mars Hydro. Uh, link down below. Okay. Okay, so anyway. I, would, I really want to begin with my Hoya fungi because it's been in here the longest as far as these plants, I almost said glow. <laughs> As far as these plants glow, I posted a picture of this a few weeks ago because it was in bloom and it had really beautiful blooms. The entire peduncle didn't bloom, but it had quite a few flowers on it. The smell was absolutely incredible. When they first uh, opened, it smelled like basil. It smelled like pesto specifically. It made me want some spaghetti. But then after a day or two, uh, the smell became a lot more floral, just like a really strong, pollen sort of scent with just a hint of pesto to it. I absolutely adore this Hoya. It's always been one of my favorite Hoyas because it grows like Carnosa. It has, you know, very easy care requirements. The leaves are pubescent and underneath they have this really fuzzy kitten-like feel. It's so cute. I love it. The leaves are huge. I love a big-leaved Hoya. 
and it's just been putting out an insane amount of growth. You can see two brand new leaves coming out there, but it's already put out, like I can't even remember which ones are new. There's one here, here, and this one back here, and this one is new. So it's, it's like, it's just putting out leaf after leaf. I mean, it's crazy how fast this is growing. Just one month in this tent has doubled the size of this Hoya. It's incredible to me. I've never seen such growth on any of my plants because I've never used such strong lighting before, but I'm very excited about it. Okay, look, you're getting stuck on everybody. Let go, let go. I wanna talk a little bit about Hoya Dacia. Now I have had this since spring of 2019. I remember I featured it in a video when I moved to Lille. And um, we don't have a very good relationship. And I gotta tell you, um, it has not done much since 2019. I have rerooted it three times, three times. But I am like determined. I'm a very patient person when it comes to plants. Like begonias, they will like completely croak, like no leaves, nothing. But I know if I just like stop watering them, give them a little bit of time, give them a lot of bright indirect light, they will come back to life. I don't like to give up and I'm very persistent. I actually wonder if this Hoya has been suffering from, I think they're called top shoot mites. The person who taught me about them was Swedish. And so she gave me the Swedish word and I translated it, like I found a Swedish article about them and it translates directly to like top growth or top shoot mites. And they're just completely invisible. They're not like spider mites. You really cannot see them. But a common occurrence is that you will have all of these nubs where growth has started, but then the leaves died out. And I actually wonder if that's what was going on. So I've treated this with sulfur a couple of times because Miro from Basie Plants told me that he's had the most success going after mites with sulfur. And it is putting out a new leaf now, so I'm hoping that we have brighter days ahead in this tent. Uh, otherwise, I'm just gonna throw it away and get a new one because I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I honestly cannot take it anymore. Here is one of my favorites. You'll see I have a lot of these in cups because uh, they're just too small to put them in like the pots that I have. And I didn't wanna like buy a bunch of new plastic like I'm recycling a lot of these cups. If I receive plants in plastic cups, I'll reuse the cups as much, as many times as I can before I like put them in the recycling. So these are both like cups in which plants have been sent to me. I don't wanna go out and buy a bunch of tiny pots. I don't wanna like buy, I don't need more plastic in my home. You know what I mean? Like I have enough plastic in my home. And so I'm just gonna wait for this to get big enough to put it in one of the plastic pots that I already have. Cause I have like, I have like 60 plastic pots. Hoya species, Nong Nooch. I just get a look at these leaves. Get a look at these leaves, brother. They're huge and they're beautiful. It's a gorgeous Hoya. I keep all of my Hoyas and the information about them, like when I got them and who I got them from in a Google sheet. And I believe I got this from Svetlana, yes. I got this from uh, a very kind Russian woman who lives not very far from me. <laughs> this isn't one of those videos where like I educate you on Hoyas. Like right now, currently, a lot of these, I don't know jack poop about them. <laughs> like I would have to read about them a little bit in order to tell you, like I have read about them, but I'm not like an encyclopedia, you know what I mean? So when I do those videos where I talk about a plant, I usually have the information readily available to me. I'm not just like a spigot for facts about Hoyas and Hoya history, but it's beautiful Hoya, am I right? I'm really happy about this one. This is Hoya EPC 964. I do see it being sold under a couple of other names, but I can't make sense of those names. And it was sold to me as EPC 964. So that's what I'm going to call it until I can like verify that it has another name. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Some people are calling it like water drop. I think some people call it Irina. I really just, I can't say, I just know that it's EPC 964. You can see it's putting out some new growth, which I'm very happy about. This is an absolutely beautiful Hoya and I'm really happy to see that it's growing so easily. It's another one that I got from Svetlana. Also, most of these are in my Hoya mix that I create myself, which is uh, a little bit of coconut coir, 
some earthworm castings, not too much because they're very rich, some orchid bark, and a lot of perlite. That's pretty much it. That's what's in my mix. I, at one point I was putting a little bit of like dolomite lime into the mix, but when I learned Hoyas prefer kind of a, a lower pH, lower, like lower than my tap water, like 6.5 to 7.5. Don't take me for my word. That's just like something that I have read, but that's not necessarily a fact. So I decided to stop putting dolomite lime in my potting mix, but none of my Hoyas have been suffering. Like I know that some of them have it in their pots and none of them are suffering. I have a question for anybody who's got a Hoya sunrise, because this thing has been in this pot since October or November. I bought this from a chick on Le Bon Coin here in France. She also sold me a Hoya Bella Albo Marginata and a Hishkeliana Variegata, which I've shown in a previous video, but that's in this tent too. And this one just hasn't shown any sign of growth. Like it's not dead. <laughs> and the leaves have become a little um, sun stressed, but it's just not even threatening to grow. And I'm wondering if, sh if there's enough stem in that cutting or if it's gonna be like one of those carry heart situations, you know, like the heart leaf carry. They put, like they just put one leaf in a pot and like the chances that it will turn into a plant are very, very slim because you need cells from the actual Hoya stem in order for it to become a plant. Otherwise it just roots and it lives forever, but as a leaf. And I'm really worried that's what happened here, but it's a cheap Hoya. And I'm just like, should I give up or should I keep waiting? Like, should I get another? I don't know. There are so many in here. I can't show you everything. I can show you some footage of what it looks like in here, but there are so many that if I show you every single one, you're gonna be like, oh my God, stop. Stop shoving Hoyas in our face. I mean, we all, we all know what Callistophylla looks like, you know what I mean? I love Callistophylla and I've looked for it. I had one, I got it at the same time that I got the Hoya Dacia, but it didn't survive. And I wonder if it's because it had those top shoot mites. Like, I'm very sad about it because now it's really difficult to come by Callistophylla. I bought like that whole plant. I think it had three leaves and I got it for like 16 bucks. This alone, like this one leaf cost me more than 16 bucks, I'll tell you that. I don't remember how much I paid for it. But you know, I'm waiting for it to root. And I know it's a little strange. I have these cups with perlite. I know there are a million ways to root plants. Okay, I know all the ways that you can root Hoyas. And I had been using, you know, like the resealable bag method, like the Ziploc baggie, put some perlite in it or sphagnum moss or clay aggregate, like whatever you prefer. <laughs> and, uh, you know, make a little moist inside, submerge the part of the Hoya that will put out roots and then blow some air into it, seal it. Like I, I used to do that, but now I have so many cuttings that it was becoming really frustrating because the Hoyas would constantly tip out of the perlite and then days would go by, I wouldn't realize it. And then I would look in and see like it hadn't been in the perlite at all. It wasn't rooting at all. And it was just really hard to manage those. So I gave up. I started putting them in cups of perlite in the tent and it's like no fail. They absolutely will root this way. Like in a week, they are rooted. And so since that's been working for me and I have so many Hoya cuttings and some of them cost me a very pretty penny, this is what I'm going with. And I know there are a million ways, but this is the way I'm doing it. So <laughs> every time I talk about like rooting plants uh, and like how I'm doing it or what ways I've had success, there's always somebody who's like, but you could also blah, 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 blah. And that's way more simple. And I'm like, I understand. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> it's not, that's not what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. Ah, uh, here we have a Nova Ghost that I burned. I burned it. Yes, yes indeed I did. I put it too close to the light too soon. Ladies and gentlemen, and what we have here are two burned Nova Ghost leaves. My apologies. <laughs> beautiful plant. Really beautiful plant. I couldn't believe how beautiful it was when it arrived. I can't believe how beautiful it is right now. Look at you, pretty thing. Ain't you the sweetest little thing? I love it. I didn't think that I would. I mean, because it's really like, it's a fad, you know, like everybody's kind of erupted into this absolute obsession with silver Hoyas and silver clones. And I didn't really get it, but I got the Nova Ghost kind of out of curiosity, but also because I thought it looked cool. And when it arrived, I was like, oh. The camera really doesn't capture the beauty of the Hoya. It's just one of those things that once you see it, 
in 3D, you realize it's, it's just very beautiful. It's a gorgeous Hoya. And I love Carnosa anyway. Carnosa is one of my top favorite Hoyas of all time. I feel that it is a very underrated Hoya. Just because it's very common doesn't make it one of the most beautiful Hoyas that we have access to. You are lucky to be able to afford Hoya Carnosa. It is beautiful. Somebody recently asked me how my Hoya Verticillata uh, Variegata is doing. Well, it's doing very well, I must say. Because when it arrived, it had root rot and I had to put it in a bag. A perlite. And it rooted right up under the mother lights that I have in the other room. And since it's been in here, I mean, it's just flourished. It's doing very well. Okay, I'm gonna be very, very gentle with this one. This is Hoya Clementiorum. Okay, I shouldn't have taken this out of time. I have to be very careful with this one. If I wreck this Hoya, I will cry. I shouldn't have done this. I feel very nervous right now. <laughs> you know what? I'll just take some B-roll of this Hoya. I'll just take some B-roll of this Hoya. I don't want to take B-roll of everything because it's really time consuming. That scared me. I thought that this... Uh, it's just a little pot that I keep in the cover pot because it's like, it's too short to, the cover pot is really tall. I just, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm like, I almost had a heart attack. Clementiorum is very difficult to find or to find for a reasonable price. And I found someone who gave me a rooted cutting of Clementiorum for a very reasonable price. And I could, like, I'm, I was just elated. <sighs> and I'm very, 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 very happy that it's doing well in this tent. When I, when I got it, it was already in a potty mix that, uh, some, it was, seemed like a cactus and succulent potty mix. It was very sandy, but it was covered in soil mites. Soil mites aren't really harmless. They don't eat the plant. They just eat, like, uh, organic matter in the soil. But there were so many that I thought I was hallucinating. I thought I was imagining things. I thought that I was just so paranoid that the plant would have pests, that I was seeing things. It was like the entire top of the pot was just covered in soil mites. So I put it in a baggie and sealed it so that it was kind of quarantined and so that the mites wouldn't migrate to any other plants. And then I gave it some time to kind of show that it was growing and that it had like stabilized, you know, that it had adapted a bit. And then, I scraped off the top like inch of the potting mix and I just doused it with diatomaceous earth. Just completely <laughs> like a whole layer of diatomaceous earth. And then I forked that. <laughs> Sounds weird. <laughs> I took a fork and I scraped that into, you know, as much as I could of the potting mix without affecting the roots. I put it back in the bag, quarantined it for another like three days, and then I took it back out. Didn't see any sign of any soil mites because they really live in like the top layer. And then I chose to like take it out, rinse off the roots, repot it, and I've kept an eye on it and I haven't seen any soil mites at all. That was a long story. I'm really sorry. <laughs> this Hoya is very special to me, okay? I'm gonna put it away because I'm just so um, obsessed with not injuring this single leaf that it is currently putting out. It should be putting out two leaves. It is not. And uh, we're, we're just gonna, we're gonna put Clemency Worm back where it belongs. This is Hoya Silver Lady Dye. Please fucking my stupid head. This is Hoya Silver Lady Dye. The two new leaves are looking a little dry. I didn't realize that the potting mix had dried out. I just repotted it. I didn't realize that the potty mix had dried out a bit, but it should rehydrate pretty quickly here. And uh, yeah, this, this is this is one of my favorite Hoyas. I'm a little obsessed with it. Obsessed in that um, I didn't know where it came from. I wanted to understand the story of it. And I ended up contacting uh, some, I'm sorry, it's drip. I just watered it and it's dripping everywhere. I, I just really wanted to know the background about this plant. I, I started investigating and it took me a couple weeks, but I finally ended up talking to a botanist in China who finally gave me like a solid answer about the origin of this plant. And I will make a video about that in the near future. I'm not gonna tell you now. <laughs>
Oh, I'm so sorry that I let it dry out. I'm very, very sorry. Please forgive me, please forgive me. Okay. This is Hoya Bunto Kansas. I'm a little concerned about it. See, what, what happened is I ordered quite a few Hoyas from a vendor here in Europe and they sent the package via UPS and UPS lost the package. Like it got here. The UPS guy lied and said that he tried to deliver it to my home but I wasn't here. Uh, I certainly was here and I was hitting refresh on that delivery page again and again and again because I was obsessed with the delivery and then to see the information before me, I was absolutely livid. And then uh, it's, later on it said it would be delivered to the nearest UPS access point. And so I went to the UPS access point later in the day, like, have they not scanned it in? What's going on? Like, I need these horrors. It was New Year's Eve. And so I was like, nothing is gonna be open tomorrow. <laughs> it was just a nightmare. I can't tell you what a nightmare this was. I went to the gas station, they didn't have it. And then, the delivery guy marked the package as delivered and signed for by someone named Amin. So I went back to the gas station and they said, nobody named Amin works here. And the delivery guy hasn't been here since the last time you were here. So that was an absolute nightmare. I was ripping out my hair. I was so frustrated because first of all, those Hoyas, like, where are they? They're perishing in a box somewhere. They don't have light. They can't photosynthesize. They don't have water. The temperature is going to drop at the time it was really warm but the temperature was gonna take a dive again because you know we were entering January. From the vendor's perspective, all she sees is the UPS tracking info and it's like, oh, they tried to deliver it, but you weren't home. And then they did deliver it to the gas station. Why don't you go to the gas station? You know, And I went to the gas station like 10 times over a period of two weeks and it never showed up. So she eventually sent me replacement plants which I am eternally grateful for. I'm just so grateful that she believed me. I wasn't trying to rip her off. And so I got this Bunto Kansas as a replacement, but it's pretty yellow and I'm just kind of worried about it. It's also in Lechuza Pond and I don't have experience with Lechuza Pond. So I like, I never know, am I supposed to water it? Should I water it? Should I not water it? I can't tell, I don't know. And it's just giving me a lot, it's like really stressing me out. I've been waiting for it to put out just like a little bit of growth so that I can repot it. I'm, af I'm afraid to repot it right now, but I'm terrified that I'm gonna lose it because I don't know how to work with lechuza pond. <sighs> it's driving me nuts. It's not, an, it's not a cheap way, okay? I don't wanna lose it. And also after the entire UPS debacle, I really don't wanna lose that plant. Hoya Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost in here. It was actually, it wasn't a potting mix. I'm a little bummed out about this. It should be bigger than it is right now. It came in like a peat mix and I could see like a bunch of silver, um, what do they call it? Springtails. I could see a bunch of springtails in it and I decided to repot it, but I didn't really inspect the roots very closely and the roots had apparently rotted away. And so it kept like starting to put out growth and then the growth was dying off and I looked at it again one day and it was just like covered in springtails. I took it out, the roots were just like rotten, completely rotten. And this, you know, the springtails were probably <laughs> really enjoying those rotting roots. You know, they eat decomposing matter and that's why there were so many of them. They had so much to eat. So I clipped all the rotten roots off and I'm trying to reroot it again in perlite. It's working, it's fine. I won't lose this plant. Um, but it is unfortunate that I have to start it over because I bought it like back in November or December. Okay, I'll show you two more. This is my Hoya AH074 Silver Clone. And I'm very excited because it is finally putting out new growth. It took about a month. It's been in this tent for like a month and a half. And it has just started to put out growth and I'm very, very excited about it. And it's grown really well too. Like these two leaves have come out in the past week and a half. So it's growing at a pretty good speed under this lamp. You know, if I had it out in my living room, it would probably still be doing nothing. I didn't, like, it's just, you know, with this light, everything grows, everything grows under this light. I'll show you this one. Cause this one is growing faster than I thought it would. This is Hoya Polyneura Brogay. Broget? I want to say Brogay because 
It seems French to me. I speak French, so every time I see a word like that, but it's probably broguet. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it's the um, silver version of polyneura. I don't have a polyneura yet. Like, I don't have a normal polyneura, but I saw this and was like, well, that's typically how I work. If, if there's a variegated version or a silver version, like, I'm gonna go for the silver version. I'm gonna go for the variegated version. So yeah, I ended up with the silver version of this. And I don't know why. I was under the impression that polyneura is a slow grower. Again, it could just be the light. <laughs> Nothing that's a slow grower in this tent, except Hoya Weimania Splash. And that sunrise, that sunrise just won't do anything. I really have a feeling the sunrise is never gonna grow. Okay, I, th I think that's, we're good. I think we're good. Oh no, okay, one more, one more. Hoya Bella Variegata. Very, very, very pretty Hoya. Absolutely gorgeous. I bought this as, uh, it was labeled as Hoya Bella Variegata. Hoya Bella, she had it labeled as, I think, Louis Wa or Louis Bui. <laughs> Here's the thing. So you have the Alba Marginata and you have the Variegata. Both variations of Hoya Bella were created supposedly by Bui Nursery and they named one of them Hoya Annika Bui and this one Hoya Lita Bui after two women in the Bui family. However, there are also Hoyas circulating as Louis, Bois, Louis, Bui. Like there, to me, it's just a very obvious misspelling. Like at some point in history, someone sold this plant and they writ in their, they writ, they wrote in their terrible handwriting, Lita Bui, but the person who bought it or the person who ended up with it had a really hard time reading their handwriting and they ended up calling it Louis Bois or something like that. You know what I mean? And it's just very obvious to me that's how it happened. It's not like someone else created another variegated version of this plant and then named it Louis Bois, which is so weirdly similar to Lita Bui. You know, I'm like, I'm sorry, I just can't. I can't ride the wave on that one. So even though it was sold to me as Louis Bois, I am calling it Lita Bui. And I know that that is controversial and that some people have a philosophy that you should never ever change the label of a plant from what it was sold to you as to avoid confusion in labeling and mix-ups. But in this case, I feel like you're only prolonging what is a very obvious misspelling of a plant, anyway. I'm sorry. <laughs> I get a little passionate about Hoyas, okay? Get a, little, get a little fired up, you know what I mean? That's just how I am. Uh, I will show you the rest of these Hoyas another time, but I did want to show you, I just, dis I just disappear and I come back and I go away and I come back. Can't get rid of me. I wanted to show you a plant that I've had in here for a month. Actually, I moved it out to the living room under my mother lights. But this is, this is a Verticillata clone for sure, but it's EPT, EPC376 LP4, and it's from Nakornrashasrima. I mean, it's, it's a Verticillata clone that I've never seen anywhere else. It's a beautiful clone. It's got splash, it's got very pretty leaves. I got it as a one leaf cutting a month and a half ago and it already has five leaves and it's like I've already had to give it a trellis because it's just growing at such high speed. So this is, it's just a fantastic Hoya. I'll try to show it to the camera. It's got these beautiful, beautiful splash leaves. You know, I've shown another Verticillata on my channel before. Now I have, I think, four or five Verticillata clones and they all look drastically different from one another. So Verticillata is a really cool Hoya species with a lot of variation. That's it for today. I just wanted to show you some of the Hoya babies in my tent. I wanted to tell you about my amazing Mars Hydra tent and the FC 3000 because I've just never, never seen my plants grow so fiercely. It's absolutely incredible. And like I said, if you're looking into getting a grow tent, you're thinking about something that will, you know, help your plants grow like wildfire, 3% off using the code Betsy Begonia. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. 
If you want to see more videos about houseplant love and care in the future, or if you want to see more of my Hoya babies in the future, subscribe to my channel. You can support me, you can support my channel, support my cats by joining my Patreon community. The link is down below in the description. Or if you're not ready for that kind of commitment, you can always just buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Betsy Begonia. I want to thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank my patrons and my energy boosters from GiveMeACoffee.com, my energy booster, Christina G, my Hoya Magosh patrons, Anthony Rankin, Carolyn Green, Frederick Bowman, and Tina Halper, my Begonia buddies, Adam Banzoff, Casey Smirnatopoulos, Crabby Cat, Darcy Levitch, Aaron Meow, Fenner Lamb, Grams underscore loves plants, Hannah Trenkel, Haley O'Donnell, Jazz and Jamie, Jennifer Broadford, Jordan, Kayla Mann, Kristen Moore, Moore, Leah A, Michelle A, Michelle Sadlowski, Pamela, Robin L. Jennings, Shara Kumar, Tisha McCann, Ula Umlaut, Vicky Dingler, Wendy Foreman, Emma Paltos Pals, Amanda, Amin, Ash the Eagle, Brianna Phillips, Sissy, Christina Wong, Claire Lynn, Denise Grimm, Elizabeth Mary, Elizabeth Valasquez, Emily Sepalu, Emma Greenwood, Eva Weir, Gracie, James Kopp, Jesse, Karen, Cassandra Lewis, Kayla, Vavra, Kelly Ash, Kelly Westover, Lexi Haynes, Lydia, Lilith Moon, Linda Thea, Lisa, Glandon, Nicholas Curtis, Olga, Plant Girl underscore 50 Asperts Free, Samantha, Shelly Everett, Sophia, Steve A, Vertigris Dreams, Wan Yang Zhang, Zen Simmer, and Anonymous Artbark. That's somebody who, uh, they don't want me to say their name, but I'm really appreciative that they are a part of my Patreon community. If you would like to support me, feel free to click the link down below or go to buymeacoffee.com slash Betsy Begonia and buy me a coffee. I could use one. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.